Hi, my name is Steve. Welcome to my shop. Today in the continuing episodes in getting the most from your slider, I'm going to show you how to build a jig to taper legs on a slider. Now, before I got the Martin, I had a Felder slider and I had several projects where I tapered legs and it was, it was a four-sided taper. I did take some photographs of that particular sled. I'm going to show them. It, it basically had some, I think it was the Desteco hold down clamps and a stop and it was, it was very specific to a particular size leg. Now generally, I'm, when I do a leg like that, most of the time I'm starting from milled eight quarter stock and I'd, I, I use metrics so I'd, I normally mill them, mill them to a 45 millimeter square. I will build a tapering jig setup for the Fritz and Franz jig. And if you've not seen the Fritz and Franz jig or are not familiar with it, I will leave a link to that at the end of this video and um, I'll show you where I start. But first, let's talk about stock selection. Okay, so I pulled two uh, pieces of timber out of my stock. This is a piece of cherry. The things that I would like to point out here is if you look at the end grain, and I don't know how well this camera is going to pick it up, so let me uh, just draw on it. The rings are really going across like this. So depending upon what face you look at, this is either quarter sawn, if you look at it like that, or in this case, it's flat sawn. This is not the ideal leg selection because if you look at the face, you'll see quarter sawn grain here and plain sawn grain on the opposite faces all the way around. And, and one of the things I always like to do, I like to use the straightest grain possible for a leg because number one, it gives you more strength, but it's more visually appealing. What I look for when I, when I mill up my lumber, I look for a piece of lumber that is rips, uh, rift sawn. And in this case, you'll see the, the growth rings and they're going across like this. And this is a, this is a really good example of rift sawn. The reason I do that is because when you look at the four faces on Riftson, as I rotate this around, and this is a piece of poplar, which probably would be painted, so it really wouldn't matter on a piece of furniture like that, but you'll see the same grain pattern on all four sides. So when I'm, I'm looking for making legs, I always look for Riftson. And I always ask my lumber supplier when, when I order my eight quarter stock, I need at least one piece that's straight grain rifts on. So that way you'll get better looking legs. Okay, to start building the jig, the first thing I did, I took a piece of quarter inch vaulted birch ply. It's roughly, I don't know, 29, 29 and a half inches long or so. I milled a runner that's sized to fit in the T-slot to my, to my uh, sliding table. Uh, you don't want this to be overly snug because you can you need to be able to get it out, but you don't want it to be over loo overly loose because it'll wiggle around. This is a pretty decent fit. Uh, what I generally like to do is maybe just get it just slightly oversized or just perfect width and then take a shoulder plane to it and I like to chamfer the, the corners so that I don't get splinters. But this is going to be a spacer that I'm going to put between the forward and trailing edges of the Fritz and Franz jig. And this is, this, technically you probably really don't need this, but what, what this gives you the ability to do, since your edge of your sliding table isn't directly in contact with your blade, you've got some gap. And this is going to assist me identifying where my cut will actually start. So I've, I've sized this such that it will overhang the sliding table. Okay, so this is my Fritz and Franz jig and I've taken this uh, stop block 
that I built off. These were made out of stacked Baltic birch ply. And I think in an earlier video I may have commented how I, I intended on, on getting this uh, down closer to the table. Um, in this case, I'm not sure that I will, but I do have some extra stock that I'm going to use. But the first thing I'm going to do is take this sled with the runner and I'm going to put it down in the slot, in the T-slot. And again, there's just, I mean, there is no wiggle room, but it's easy enough to pull out if you grab the ends. One of the advantages is with this gap, which, which I intended for sawdust relief, it's more than I wanted, but what I find is this fits under here very well. to do is I've got these dowel centers and these fit into in this case a quarter inch hole five sixteenths three eighths or half I think I'm going to try a quarter inch and I'm going to put this drill a hole the right distance above my sled such that this dowel center will insert in that hole I apologize probably can't even see that um, as a pivot point for my leg and then I'll, I'll use a center punch or a nail set to establish the center of my leg that this point will go into. So that's the next step. Um, first thing I need to do is, is figure out where the center of my leg is. Okay, I've uh, got the large stop block set on and, and I'm, I intentionally use this wider one because as as things change, I can drill different hole centers along this and just cut off what I don't need. Um, so I've got the, the sled portion of this jig assembled. And right now, I just don't want to, I don't need to worry too much about the, the setting away from the blade. What I want to do first is decide where I'm going to put my uh, dowel center and I think I'm probably just going to just make a line this here. Is a, this is a sample piece for demonstration purposes only. This is nothing but the highest quality basswood which is what I had on hand. Um, but I've marked, I've measured this. This is 44 millimeters uh, square which is just shy of, of um, one and three quarters of an inch. So now I'm going to take my measuring device. So half of 44 is 22 millimeters and I'm going to come up from the base of my sled on that line 22 millimeters. taken the top of the leg and I've marked around say I want 120 millimeters up here. I'm going to use that to determine where the edge meets that intersects that line. For the bottom and lathe turning tool you could mark diagonally across the corners but I, I used a nail set made a small indentation to center this then I finished it up using the dowel center and a hammer and I just tapped that into place. So this is going to be the pivot point for the bottom of my leg. Because my dowel center is raised above the, uh, the sled somewhat, I just went ahead and, and marked 10 millimeters, which is roughly 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. So that would nominally give me, oh, it looks like uh, since this is about 1 and 3 quarters, taking 3 quarters off, this would leave me a 1 inch square at the bottom of the leg. So let's see how this, this uh, works. And I'm going to use that mark 
on the bottom to position where this stop goes. So I'll put the center, dowel center in here. My height is already established. And I'm just going to use this to position that mark. I'll pull this back so you can see what I'm doing here. And on this side, I'm going to establish this stop such that that line, part, part where that line hits the edge of that sled is just, and I probably will just put it in just a little bit for this first cut. So now I've got this stop set, which sets the reveal at the top and then this side which sets the bottom. Okay, now we're ready for the cut. is just visible. Okay, so that's how I do a four-sided taper, and I would use a hand plane to clean up the, the saw blade marks, but let's see how the bottom looks. And at the top, I'm just, I, I intentionally set this back a little further so to allow for sanding and, and whatever, but uh, that's how I do a... Uh, a four-sided taper on a table saw leg. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I, I kind of was noodled in my mind how best to do that without building another jig. So I did, uh, I guess I built a part of a jig anyway, but I modified the Fritz and Franz to do the, the four-sided taper or two-sided taper or any taper for that matter. Uh, I appreciate any questions or comments you have. And I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great weekend.